Stephen Warbrook and Choral Classics. My name is Philip Dawson and it's a great privilege to introduce five Choral Classics this lunchtime, selected by Olivia Tate and performed under her direction by our talented Choral Scholars. This week our theme, Phenomenal Women, marks International Women's Day. While war affects everyone regardless of gender, UN statistics show that women and girls are twice as likely to experience sexual violence during and after periods of conflict. Just as shocking is the fact that in the past 30 years, seven out of 10 peace processes worldwide have not involved any women negotiators or signatories. Women excluded from officially promoting the peace expressed so beautifully in the responsory we've just heard by the pioneering Amy Beach, composed in 1891, setting to music text from the Gospel of John. The vital yet officially unrecognized efforts of women in pursuing peace and reconciliation can be glimpsed in the wartime scrapbooks of Imogen Holst. These reveal that at the time she was composing our next piece of music, she was lobbying for the release of composers held in internment camps here and organising concerts highlighting the talents and plight of refugees. Causes which perhaps influenced her decision to set John Donne's text to music. The poet's subtitle explains that a hymn to Christ was written at the author's last going into Germany. which would have dismayed but not discouraged civil rights activist Maya Angelou, 
who explains that underlying all her writing is the message, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. Resilience and self-confidence in the face of adversity abound in these verses from Phenomenal Woman, one of her most famous poems, read for us now by Izzy. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model's size, but when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about, so I have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. El Salvador, Jamaica and Honduras are amongst the most dangerous places in the world to be a woman today. Here, rates of femicide, the intentional murder of women by men simply because they're women is the highest in the world. A toxic combination of poverty and organized crime thought to be behind the murder of one woman every 16 hours. Less than four in 100 such cases ever prosecuted. Our next piece of music sets the last words of a phenomenal woman before she was killed. Edith Cavell, a nurse who sheltered and cared for both Allied and German soldiers and helped them to escape, was betrayed by an informer, arrested and sentenced to death by firing squad. Her last words, recorded by an Anglican chaplain, are set to music by Cecilia McDowell in a piece which evokes Edith Cavell's last lonely night in a military prison before her execution in October 1915. The soprano soloist is Laura Newey.
Last summer, I visited Norweg, a women's project in the Aida refugee camp to the north of Bethlehem. In order to fund therapy for their disabled children, these women have drawn on their skills to form a business cooperative, offering cookery classes, accommodation, and making souvenirs. Economic empowerment that has had a small but important cascade effect to other women through a local supply chain. These women not only nurture the health of their families and community, but are guardians of culture and tradition through the classes and the gifts that they sell. Our next piece is My Guardian Angel, a carol by Judith Weir based on a short text by William Blake.
spoke in a voice I could make full rooms from, gentle, held our cheeks by tired hands, as if by some need to touch what was her own, smiling like it was something she was surprised at herself for. I stared back, wondered what my mother saw in each stretched absence. If that night she would dream of children with swollen stomachs and empty hands, if she would always measure what had been lost by the difference in her daughter's spines. Eventually, with fingers gripped tight between us, we drove through the evening, and I thought about what had been broken in my mother, how fast I could make it whole. I hope you will return to Choral Classics next week. We rely on donations to finance our music ministry here, so please do give generously before you leave to ensure we can maintain it. And if you've been moved to try a bit of singing yourself, you're in the right place. Friendly, informal rehearsals of the Walbrook Community Choir follow. Do join them. Our final a cappella piece today breathes musical life into Edith Franklin Wyatt's poem, giving thanks for the joys of companionship. As we listen, perhaps we might call to mind the phenomenal women who have been guiding lights in our lives. With every blessing for the week ahead from us all here until the next time.